action. There we'll find real Islam, there we'll find the beatific aqeedah or jurisprudence, everything will be found at that destination. So our love, our life is the direction of Sayyidina Muhammad No matter how good somebody's Arabic is, how interesting their tafsir is, whatever they talk about, if they don't talk about Sayyidina Muhammad and they're not taking people into the direction of Sayyidina Muhammad it's worth nothing, absolutely nothing. In the end you find that it was actually something contaminated and dirty. Means that when someone wants to glorify themselves and deviate mankind, they leave out their imam. So just like in tariqah they come and talk about and talk about and talk about but they don't mention their shaykh, then you say, where the heck this person is taking everybody? Because they don't want to mention where they got it from, what's the de destination, what's the example, what, are, what is the whole focus of Islam and our spiritual path. فَأَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ أَتِيَ اللَّهَ أَتِيَ رَسُولُ أُولُ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ And always a reminder from myself, an abduqul ajeezu da'eefu miskeenu zalimu jahal And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Everything through tariqah is very simple. People like it hard. People want to go somewhere and be confused. They feel this great. Right college you would speak and other professors are in the audience and they say, oh this is a, is a genius mind this person. And they talk so much rubbish and so much confusion that only the other professors loved it. They loved that their mind was twisted, that they couldn't understand anything what this guy was talking about. They thought that was fascinating, it was ingenious and had nothing to do with realities. Realities should be so complicated that they're so simplistic and the karma and the miracle of Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah is the most complicated realities will be spoken in a way that our mini Naqshbandi Jama are taking notes. And if you look at their notes, those are big haqqaiqs that later you can go and reference them to very complicated discussions from ulama. And they give us in our life everything simple. So we described all of Islam in the last few weeks, binary code plus and minus. Don't have to give you examples of fiqr, which fiqr school, which usul, what's this, everything is binary code. Allah's one, you're nothing. Allah's one, be nothing. Allah's the goal and I'm a zalim because that's the door to being nothing. If you don't agree that you're an oppressor to yourself, left to yourself and to your mind and to your desire, you will go straight to destruction. Anybody given authority, wealth and permission, they leave them to themselves, the shaitan will play with them. And that ana abdukul ajis, that there are nothing Ya Rabbi. I'm no one, no matter you gave me the wealth of the earth compared to your wealth is nothing. You gave me a knowledge, it's nothing compared to your oceans of realities and knowledge, it's but a drop because Allah can always expand if you come through humility. So our whole lives were taught by shaykhs, be nothing. Later we understood through their pushing into the heart, that's binary code. Binary code is an energy and electricity. And when Allah sends a current it's plus, when the current is negated it's negative. 
So our life is a binary code. If in your life you make Allah one, the one Allahu Ahad, there is nothing like onto that. There's nothing I will submit to, there's nothing that I will let to dominate me, there will be nothing that directs my compass other than the one. And so I am no one. So that will be our motto on the shirts, be no one. So I was going to write no and a one, then I thought all the people would say, oh you're so arrogant, you're saying you're number one. I said, no, no, it actually has to be read. No one. Let Allah be the one in life. We don't have to take that responsibility. Submit, so that's called Islam. Islam is the religion of a binary code, a religion in which tells you in every word, be nothing, Allah is the one. La ilaha illallah is one, Muhammadun Rasulullah is nothing is the perfect abd. That's why Prophet said, I am Abdullah, I am the servant, I am the one whom is the master of negation, follow me I'll teach you how to negate so that you can reach La ilaha illallah with its realities. But everybody wants to be the one. So binary code tells you, if you're on and you're the one, there's no way you're drawing near Allah no matter what you think you understood or how many hadiths you memorize or how much of the Qur'an, some people have photographic memory. And this is not a isharat into their heart, these are, are, are tricky people that they were given a gift if they've not been disciplined by shaykhs and they're a, a, a part of a shajara and a chain, that gift can be very mischievous because they have the ability to memorize everything they see. They're kids like that. So that's not, uh, you know, that's not something like a guidance into the heart, that's something completely different. They can memorize verses, pages and begin to talk from themselves and we say, but he's memorized everything, yeah because he has photographic memory, that's something else. But this path of reality is very simple, Allah's one and I'm going to live a life of nothing. And then we described. Atiya Allah, Atiya Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. If we accepted to be nothing and accepted to move towards the one, well then Allah Atiya Allah, I'm happy you accepted I am Allah and that you obey me. What I really want for you is to obey my perfect servant. Go to the hand of Muhammadun Rasulullah he represents my one. No other Prophet, no other religion, no other reality is in that perfection of submission. Whatever they try to reach of submission it was nothing in comparison to Sayyidina Muhammad and that's what Prophet taught to his companions and Abdullah, Allah name me. Later only Allah come in to teach us, it's the binary code that Prophet mahi al dunub the one whom Allah gave a permission to destroy the sins of anything coming near it and the greatest sin is to think you're something, right? The greatest sin is to be a, a, a charge, wa ana rabbil ala. The pharaohs of this world, I am the Lord Most High. So now all social media is what? Pharaohs. Their car deems them they don't need Allah. Their homes, their bank account, fake bank accounts, oh I got this many Bitcoin, got this much, I got this. These are all the pharaohs of dunya. And our life was about Allah the one I'm to be nothing. As a result of that Allah shifts that love that if you really want to follow and follow my oneness, go to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad he is a one, he is the one out of all creation, you won't find one like this. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ وَمَا What's وَمَا?
the wow from a wadud, but Allah starts it with a negation. This is the master of negation. I would not have sent, I would not had to start a sentence with, with the negative. I would not have sent, giving a clue that this reality of Prophet is the great annihilator. And why his greatest gift is, I'm going to be interceding. What does that mean? In science it's a black hole. The concept of a black hole is intercession, right? They say anything caught in the gravitational pull of a black hole becomes what? It's gone. And they say as they see it, they see it moving towards the black hole, the black hole is actually ripping it to pieces, taking all of it down to its elements, its dust and shooting it in. And for us the analogy and understanding this is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Nothing will, will approach Allah as if it's standing and significant. And, and the reality of Prophet annihilates that, brings it down to be nothing, make everything to be qashiya. Where was that in Qur'an? When Sayyidina Musa asked, Ya Rabbi let me see you, see me. You think it's like that easy? I show you my greatest sign. Who's Allah's greatest sign? He saw the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and what Prophet that's why he asked Musa what he saw. Why? Because he became dust after he saw it. No way for his wujud and his being to stand in the presence of that light, Prophet annihilated him into a dust. That what do you think, you're going to go see Allah Just the Muhammadan nur knocked everything down, brought it to its smallest and elemental form. And then Allah said, then we revived him. Means the great annihilator sent him into a binary expression. That you're coming to Allah like you're a prophet of Allah like you're going to be on coming into the Divinely Presence, this requires your off state and took him into dust. What he showed him in that reality that when he came back and Allah brought him back to his exist- existence, in anna awwal al-Muslimin, he testified to the reality of Prophet by saying, I'm the first of those to believe. I'm now Muhammadiyoon. That this is the reality of a binary code and a reality of ishq and love. And so only Allah come into our, our life, make Islam very simple. My life is to submit to Allah Well then where am I going to find Allah with Sayyidina Muhammad because many religions will be claiming that they're with Allah But the only one we want is the one that has the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And that one, the one whom is in that love should be teaching about that love. Should be teaching about that one, should be praising upon that one, should be having associations upon the majestic might of that one and teaching the audience, you're nothing compared to that one. Learn your binary code that take a path in which you're moving to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad that is the reflection of the one of Allah that is the shadow of Allah And that when you make the compass to be the love and the ishq of Prophet then what du'a do you need when you have difficulty? Make salawats and then ask Allah When you have something that's not opening, make salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad then ask Allah Make your majlis, make your salawats, do your associations give in the way of Mawli, do all of these things to show that yourself is nothing because Allah is going to give us that make your code to be true, 
submit yourself that I'm no one Ya Rabbi, I'm no one. Let me to be in the presence of that one that I want to reach to your one. And Allah is teaching us, my oneness is in Sayyidina Muhammad that come to him, learn from him, love him, respect him, draw near onto him his nazar will begin to destroy all your bad characteristics. Shahidan, Mubashiran wa Nadiran. Allah describes Prophet throughout Qur'an, he witnesses. Bashiran, he'll give you lights because he's illuminated with lights and blessings. As your soul is negating then it's moving towards the positive. If you make yourself a negative charge and reconfirm to yourself, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. The world is trying to make me into something and in reality empty your cup, I'm nothing. If you are nothing with the focus of that love it draws you into it, means the reality of Prophet brings you into his love. If you're nothing I'll dress you with that love. That energy, that charge draws you in. Means then our life is very simple, keep the association of the love and the muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad and make the focus of our lives about attaining that. If that's the love that I want, that's the association that I want, how am I going to <coughs> attain that reality? We do the zikrs, we do the salawats, we do all of these practices, attend the majlis whether we're at home or in the associations. All of those are for the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad Then we become nothing. And we draw into that reality of oceans of power. That was again our understanding from Laylatul Qadr. Layl means night and non-manifest and Qadr. Every time we negate an ocean of power begins to dress. This is the binary code. We use it in all our technologies. Every time you're nothing Allah sends a charge, be nothing Allah sends a charge. Then people start to ask, well then let me give examples of nothingness. Every time you argue and this, these realities are for adults reaching Allah and trying to reach towards their Islam. Before puberty is not relevant, this is not the teachings for little kids, this is the teachings for adults moving towards the reality of Allah If a child is in difficulty at school, in all means you have to defend your child and teach your children how to defend themselves. So children are something completely different subject. They're not to be humiliated in the path, this is about adults. Adults, their examples, check that somebody bothers me at work, what do I do? Again never abuse. Anyone abusing is not allowed. This is not Allah sending abuse to people, that should be an obvious in someone's mind. This is about egoism. That if you take a path like Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq that put a stone in your mouth but people will choke so put a lollipop. And every time you think to yourself, should I answer back, should I say something, should I argue with someone, that's egoism. That your boss says something, why you have to talk back? Just stay quiet. Every time you stay quiet and humble yourself, Allah sends a charge because Allah rewards humility. Allah doesn't reward gangsters. You know, say something and they slap you back. That's not Allah say, ah oh, this is it, this Sayyidina no Omar was tough, I'm tough too. No, they're completely wrong. Sayyidina Umar Farooq was tough for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad and since you're not Sayyidina Muhammad that's nafsani. So our way is to be soft, to be quiet. That in work somebody is agitating, stay quiet, Allah will raise you, Allah will send a, a power. Then they say, well how do you know Allah sending a power? Because you feel good. And everyone knows that. When you open your mouth and start talking, you don't feel good. 
And if you have the slightest bit of a conscience, you begin to think all night long, should I have said that? I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't have said that. Because this is a group who's supposed to understand meditation and tafakkur and contemplation. Then I talk, I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't have replied, I, sh I shouldn't have talked. They know that and that's the feeling you don't want. And when it works you feel good, oh, oh I got through that and I tried my best to stay quiet. But if you feel hurt, oh they said these horrible things, I kept my mouth, go on your prayer carpet. And as soon as you go on your prayer carpet you make sujood and you begin to cry. And that's Allah's gift to you because as soon as you cry you feel like you're in the embrace of Allah Every time you face a difficulty and you took the higher path, stayed quiet, whatever the testing was, even the shaykh is saying something to you, don't talk back, don't give an answer, don't justify your ego, just stay quiet. Your work, stay quiet. Your spouse, stay quiet because the spouse is no longer following the orders of Allah The man is a positive and is the imam of the home, the female is the submitting of the home. And it's not negative, she's actually very powerful because Allah gave her the power to bring creation within her womb. She's supposed to be the humble servant of Allah because He gave her the power of creation and knows that the man is going to be the imitated one. But he's supposed to be an imam and guide his family. And Allah made the man and blew his spirit into him and from his rib he made the woman. So she's from him and he's from Allah But nobody follows that system so they're all fighting because they're all ones. So a group of ones they attack and fight each other. This path of reality is immense. If I live my life trying my best to negate, so at work they bother me, stay quiet, Allah will dress you with power. And when Allah dresses you with power you feel His embrace because you feel His satisfaction. So if it was severe and we know as shaykhs you've been tested severely that you go onto your prayer carpet and you cry. That it was difficult, that the honour taken, difficulty, things were said, but you feel the warmth of Allah's embrace and that's the feeling you're searching for all your life, that Allah's good with you, I'm happy with you. You feel all My angels around you, you took a higher path, you stayed quiet, I dressed you with energies means I dressed you with angels. So then what Prophet told Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq A man came into the masjid and began to attack Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq And he stayed quiet and then Prophet was smiling and smiling and smiling and he was watching because Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq was staying quiet. But then Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq decided he'll say something. He said something Prophet stood up. For us just to understand Siddiqul Mutlaq is not something to be achieved, stood up and began to walk. And Prophet and Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq was so upset that, what did I do to offend you? Ran after Prophet said, when he was attacking me you're smiling. But when I tried to stop him and stop it you got up and walked away. He said, as long as he was attacking you I saw angels all around you dressing you. So I was smiling there, MashaAllah look at all these angels are dressing him. But as soon as you spoke it became something different. And this was the dalil of a binary code, the Prophet teaching us, as long as you remain silent through difficulty and you can keep that silence as long as it's not oppressive, angels are dressing you and that's called energy, angels angelic realities that dress and as a result of your embrace with Allah's lights and, and ridha and satisfaction 
you feel content, you feel content, you feel content until you have an abundance of angelic energy dressing your reality because your khuluq and your character is now like that. Your khuluq is not fiery, not fiery. Fiery is the a complete opposite of humility, it's faraoni. Someone's fiery, they're faraoni. Right? Because they have a fire from them. That's the farthest reality from humility. So this is how to achieve Allah's satisfaction and submission. This is Islam. All the fancy fiqr, everything you teach in this world, if you don't achieve this code, Allah says, we came to their knowledge and we threw them, the seven who will come on the day. They came with their zakat, Allah grab him, grab him on his face and drag him out. Why? Because whatever they built and did and practiced was based on arrogance and fire. What are Allah going to reward from that? So the amal and actions and knowledges and, and, and memorization mean absolutely nothing if first the establishment of this reality is not established, that my life is to be humble to be nothing. When people bother me, try my best in life. When it's not oppression, just stay quiet, stay quiet, stay quiet. Work, stay quiet. People arguing, stay quiet. People confronting you, stay quiet. People attacking you at a distance, you stay quiet. And when it becomes too much, go to your prayer carpet and cry to Allah it was wrong, it was… Uh, that was oppressive. And Allah will love you, kiss you, embrace you, make you feel, don't worry. And if Allah agrees with you, I'm going to smash them, don't worry. Because Allah is the one who says, I take and I am the wali of my lovers. I'm the one who defends the ones whom love me and they turn their account over to me. That's why the same other hadith come out that don't make war with Allah's friends. Don't fight and bother Allah's friends because Allah will make war against you from that reality. So why you have to take your right on something? Why you have to say something just to make your ego happy? Stay quiet, stay quiet, stay quiet. So all these taskiyat awliya on how people were abusing them, cursing them, saying weird things on emails and, and posting horrible things against them on, on social platforms and their practices were, stay quiet. As you stay quiet Allah dress you and bless you. And as you stay quiet, Allah is the one who takes his sab. For Allah's energy, Allah's might is, 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 is something you have to fear. And fear the one who stays quiet through difficulties and calamities. Because they're quiet, Allah's going to punish you. But the one who talk a lot and make all the retribution through their mouth, well, Allah's going to get involved. Said, you did it yourself, you took whatever you want, you lost all the barakah, you talked a lot. So means this way is miraculous, this power is immense. And that's why the people who understand this path, it's all about manners. Keep the love for Prophet in their attendance and in their majlis, keep good manners. They're teaching the adab, stay quiet, stay quiet, Allah will dress you, bless you. And if you think it's going to be so bad that people are just going to ridicule you everywhere or make things difficulty for you everywhere or don't worry because you have a mighty Lord that's watching you. And we have so many stories of these realities of what happened to people who came against Shaykh Nazim, what happened to people who came against Mawlana, what happened to people who came against everyone. So Allah's great. Don't have to worry about people are going to get away with it. A lot of people say, oh why, why we have to, people will get away with it. No, nobody gets away with anything because they all have the same Lord. Your Lord, my Lord is the same. If we learn to have good manners, the whole case goes to Allah And at the same time we're being dressed by beautific lights, beautific energies, beautific realities. The abundance of angelic light and energy upon the soul it's byproduct or the knowledges and realities.
because of the angelic knowledge and angelic reality of energies upon their soul, every knowledge is flowing from their soul. We pray that Allah give us a deep understanding to tafakkur and to contemplate this binary code. In this month of Shawwal which is the 10th lunar month, it's the reality, the reality of one and zero that Ramadan made us to be zero. You come out of Ramadan like a newborn child. So you became a nukht, a dot, a nothing. And then 10th month means that dot now is moving into the presence of one to dress and to be blessed with that reality. We pray that Allah dress us from these realities and these lights. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon as salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa <coughs> wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.